Irina, when, when you want to start. Whenever I, I want, I will start. I, I'm just thinking to wait a little bit until everybody will join us to in the in the Zoom uh, room, <laughs> because it looks like now they are gradually entering. And uh, thank you for coming. Thanks, everybody, for joining this discussion. It's really, really an honor to, to introduce uh, Professor Molina. Um, Perhaps uh, unless you you want to start now, or we wait maybe one more one more minute to see if more people are. We already have like a, the participants. I guess we can start. Just uh, to announce everybody that uh, we I will uh, make a short presentation of the work of uh, Professor Molina, and then uh, we will have a presentation PowerPoint that he will share with us. And then we have time for questions. I certainly prepared already a few questions because I'm really interested that actually in, in the work uh, that Professor Molina is doing. So if you have uh, questions, please don't, uh, don't hesitate to write them um, throughout the presentation in the Q&A. Or uh, if you want to get a direct uh, conversation, uh, let us know. Again, thank you for coming. Um, again, I'm honored to present uh, Professor Molina. Mm, decades of work in, in the field of rural and agricultural history and environmental issues, hundreds of publications related to agroecology, agrarian change, social metabolism, sustainability, commons, um, energy efficiency. So very important keywords of uh, what is happening nowadays especially in the context of the so-called Green New Deal and um, just transitions. Professor Molina is a director of the Agroecology Master Degree Program, coordinator of the Agroecosystems History Laboratory at the University of Pablo de Olavide. Um, he is a president of the Spanish Society for Agrarian History. Uh, and he is currently a member of the editorial board of uh, journals like Historia Agraria and the Anthropocene and Sustainability. Um, Professor Molina was also vice president of the Spanish Society for Organic Agriculture, and he was minister of the Department of Ogra Organic Agriculture of the Andalusia government. So uh, decades of experience and expertise that uh, can be presented uh, in at least three books that uh, he published. For example, The Social Metabolism, a Social uh, Ecological Theory of Historical Change, Energy in Agroecosystems as a Tool for Assessing Sustainability, and Political Agroecology, Advancing the Transition to Sustainable Food Systems. As I said, author of hundreds of articles we cannot even uh, <laughs> say everything that he published, but we will mention just a few uh, journals that are very, very well known, like Ecological uh, Economics, Environment and History, Land Use Policy, Environmental History, Ecology and Society. So uh, we are really looking forward to, to know more about um, uh, the history and how history can play a role in uh, designing the future for a sustainable food system and uh, with a specific focus on the Spanish case for today. Um, looking forward to hear your presentation, Professor Molina. Thank you, uh, Irina. Is, uh, I am uh, um, very old for this reason. I have a decade of uh, experience. I am so old. <laughs> Boa tarde. Antes de mais, gostaria de agradecer a reporta e Margarida Sobral, neto e demais colegas do comitê organizador pelo seu amável convite. É para mim um prazer eh, participar neste quarto encontro de história ambiental portuguesa. Embora gostasse de falar em português, vou a fazer a minha intervenção em inglês. Eh, ah, eh, al Wait a little bit. I have to, to, to share my, my presentation because it's not uh, impossible to. Uh, yes, we can we can see. Yes, uh, now it's okay. Perfect. Uh, uh, as a citizen, 
an academic and environmental list uh, person, I am committed in change the food system because it's clearly unsustainable, as I will show you later on. To do that, uh, we need to know how, how the, the food system has been evolving in order to propose more uh, uh, sustainable ways to organizing it. This is a typical exercise of what we have called applied history that allows us to learn from past experiences from designing the future. To do so, we have used several biophysical tools such as uh, social metabolism analysis, greenhouse gas emission balance, and land embodied in biomass flows. We have applied them to a Spanish case. The result uh, clearly point out the hot spot that uh, we need to change for reducing the metabolic profile of Spanish food system. Finally, I will provide some ideas about how to get it. Well, we have used a metabolic approach to analyze the food system. But what is social metabolism? This concept is a metaphor taken from biology and used for describing the biophysical relationship between society and its environment. From a thermodynamic point of view, human society need to generate order by consuming energy and material from their, um, their environment where dissipated waste ends up. So social metabolism studies this exchange of energy and material that all societies make with their environment. Therefore, it provides uh, a biophysical knowledge of society and whether this exchange uh, of material and energy is or not sustainable. Uh, although there are different schools of social metabolism, for example, the Institute of uh, Social Ecology in Vienna, uh, leading by uh, Marina Fischer Kowalski or Musia Sen in Barcelona, leading by Mario Gian Pietro and colleague or the Metabolic Reef, mainly in USA and leading by uh, John Bellamy Foster or Agrarian Metabolism uh, in Mexico, leading by Victor Toledo or in Spain, leading by Enrique Tello and our uh, research team. The methodological approach that has been most successful and widespread has been the MIFA, Material and Energy Flow Accounting. This methodology quantifies the flows of energy and material coming into the economic system of a specific society and the outflows consisting in of consumer goods, services, and solid, liquid, and gaseous waste. This methodology has been, has been adopted by Eurostat and later by the United Nations as a methodology for compiling biophysical accounts of national economies. When uh, we apply to our ecosystem, also to food system, this methodology can provide very, very relevant information to understand the functioning of them. For example, it provides a integrated analysis of the physical basis of food system operation. It points out the critical point of the system configuration and is hot spot of unsustainability. This is very important for us, uh, as we'll see later on. It allows monitoring the transition towards an alternative model, correcting its most unsustainable element at any given uh, moment of transition. So the methodology provides quality information for collective decision making. 
So uh, to know the real or the actual uh, functioning of the Spanish food system, the metabolic methodology is the most appropriate one, I think, no? even though its application presents some methodological and data sources problems. The life cycle analysis, this is another uh, very well-known methodology, has been very useful for complete the, the gaps that the, 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 the data sources and many other problems have in, in our study. Our analysis has focused on the total amount of primary energy used by the Spanish food system and how much is represent in the Spanish economy as a whole. This slide, for example, shows the different steps in the food chain that we have analyzed and the main consuming activities involved. Agricultural production, food processing activities, packaging, energy consumption in sale and retail outlets, and the energy use in households. In every step of the food chain, we estimate the final energy consumption as well as the embodied energy. So the, to translate, of course, the, the, the final energy into primary energy. As I've already said, life cycle analysis factors are also used to complete, complete the, this gap uh, we have uh, in our study. Only I, I want to uh, pose one problem. I have many problems, but one for me is important is the result we have, uh, we get, don't provide the whole energy consumption of food. So we cannot make a balance, but this is a good proxy of the real cost of food, Spanish food. Uh, this uh, slide presents the evolution of the Spanish food system from the 60s to 2000 uh, to 2010. The last year, uh, with all statistic, st statistical data available, you can appreciate a large number of activities have grown between production and consumption. They have increased energy consumption tenfold from 181 petajoules in the 60s, it has risen to 1,855 petajoules by 2010. So food has become one of the most energy consuming economic activities in Spain and therefore one of the main causes of insustainability. This is for me very important important to assess this, this result. If we take into account the whole Spanish economy, we can see that today one out of the every five energy units is invested or used by the food system. Renewable energies, uh, as uh, is very well known, are growing uh, uh, in Spain, but in other uh, European countries, mass, most of the energy use still, in the Spanish case, come from fossil fuels. Although the energy transition must be accelerated, it has the, 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 we need to, to do that, a significant reduction in the energy used by the food system is absolutely needed. As I will show later, this goal is not only possible, but also desirable. If we analyze the 2010 data more in depth, we can detect the hot spot of unsustainability of the Spanish food system and why it uses so much energy. Agricultural, agricultural activities are responsible for the use of almost a quarter of the energy invested in the food system as a whole. The consumption and manufacture of chemical fertilizer, especially nitrogen fertilizer, 
which are very energy intensive to produce, electricity to raise groundwater, which has become the main source of water for irrigation, and the huge amount of feed used by intensive livestock farming are the main cause of such a large, large amount of energy used in agriculture. This fact uh, reflects the predominance of industrial, of industrial agriculture, of course, so intensive or based on external, the use of external input coming from uh, mineral sources and fossil fuels, of course, located outside Spain. Also reflect the predominance of intensive livestock farming. In fact, Spain has undergone a big process of, uh, I, I call, uh, livestocking, as to say, the primacy of livestock breeding activities and the productive orientation of arable land toward livestock farming to feed the, the, the animals. In the, indeed, agricultural production has increased uh, sixfold in monetary term and threefold in physical term since the middle of the 50s. This has been made possible by the injection of a huge amount of external energy in the form of inputs that are necessary for its operation. In fact, the use of inputs has increased, increased twofold since the middle of the 50s. Uh, this had a negative, of course, effect, environmental and social effect. Firstly, the energy efficiency of agricultural production has dropped dramatically. And secondly, intermediate costs have multiplied in the agricultural sector, the depressing farmers' income. The intensive use of, of uh, chemical, especially nitrogen, fertilizer, and pesticide is responsible uh, for the widespread contamination of the uh, surface and groundwater. This pollution phenomenon is a representative case of the environmental impact of industrial agriculture. Transport along the whole chain is the most energy consuming activity almost 26% of the total. Most of the consumption stem from road transport, uh, specifically 20% specifically 20 of the food system total energy use. This is because the bulk of food stops are transported over long distance within the country by a huge fleet or refrigerated lorries various or different sizes. To this, we must be added the role of food and feed import in the Spanish domestic market, despite the low energy cost of transport by chief. As can be easily deduced, the cause of this huge waste of energy is to be found in the so-called Food mile syndrome associated with long and distant marketing channels, which require developing a tremendous logistical apparatus. Most of the food consumed in Spain undergoes some kind of processing of transformation, either by the agri food industry or for preservation, transport, and sale. The agri food industry uses almost 13% of the energy requirement and another 10% as is invested in packaging activities. Spain consumes more than 2 million tons of glass, more than 1.5 million tons of plastic, and more than 100 
and 50,000 tons of cardboard or paper preparation for agri-food uh, agri uses alone. The Spanish people are consuming, is close related, uh, more and more processed and super processed food with uh, serious consequences for health, but also for the environment. We must uh, add to these food activities the energy consumed in retailing in shops and supermarkets, as well as the activities taking place in restaurants, bars, hotels. They are responsible for another 10% of total energy use of food, the Spanish food system. A third of the money spent of food and beverage in Spain take place in bars, restaurants and hotels because Spain is a very touristy country. Household energy use is surprisingly high, almost 17%, the highest after agriculture and transport. This is due to the prevalence of out-of-season food with high conservation needs, for example, using powerful fridges and a meat diet that multiply the energy needs for cooking. A diet with more fresh and seasonal food produced by nearby agroecosystem will further reduce, course, the metabolic profile of the food system without having to reduce the quality of what is eaten. As I have already said, the food system per more performance is costly, not only for Spanish environment, but also for the environment in the third countries. This is due to Spanish eating habits that have changed over the last few decades, with a diet rich in meat and dairy products, which has led to a dramatic growth in intensive livestock farming. This slide shows the striking increase of livestock in Spain and the physical balance of the Spanish biomass trade. As you can see, the main component of this biophysical balance trade is animal feed. The growth of intensive livestock farming has boosted the consumption of animal feed, of course, while pastoral livestock farming has decreased dramatically and pasture has been abandoned. A huge amount of cheaper GMO maize on soya and soya are imported from Brazil and Argentina. This is phenomenon is a consequence of globalization of agricultural market course. So Spanish biomass consumption has been decoupled from the territory, as you can see in this picture. No? Domestic biomass extraction is the green line, is lower than domestic consumption that uh, is the, the, the blue line. In, recent, in our recent paper, we have uh, calculated the land embodied in the international biomass trade. The results show that the total land imported by Spain amounts for 11 million hectares, while export reached 2.5 million. So, the Spanish food system imports 8.5 million hectares from another countries, another uh, from other countries, mainly from Latin America. Deforestation, poor working condition damage caused by the use of pesticides, many of which are banned in Europe, are some of the consequences uh, for these uh, countries. The shift to a diet based on meat and dairy, dairy products has boosted greenhouse gas emission from the agricultural sector, as uh, we show it in a paper published in 2015. In short, the agricultural sector, sector is responsible for 
only one out of four, four un units of energy used in the food system. The food transport is industrial processing, packaging, sale, preservation, and consumption, consumption account for the remains 75%. Therefore, any sustainable alternative has to pay attention not only to the conversion of industrial agriculture into a more sustainable one, but also to promote a deep conversion of the way the food system is organized. We need to invest almost 2,000 petajoules to satisfy the endosomatic metabolism of the Spanish people, while the energy contained in the food consumed barely reaches 235 petajoules. So, for every energy unit consumed as a food, almost eight have been spent on its production, distribution, transport, and preparation. I have already said that with this data, is what not possible to make an energy balance of, of, of the diet. But it's clear that feeding the Spanish people is a very costly process from an envir environmental point of view. This is a light slides show the results of our research in which we have measured the emission of the food system. Total emission represents 41% of the emissions in Spain Spanish production sector as a whole, and 32% of the population's consumption activities. As can be seen, the activities that contribute most to emission are the manufacture and use of inputs, agrarian inputs, in which a huge amount of fossil fuel is used, and in the feed used by intensive like livestock farming, most of which come from the uh, third countries, as uh, I already said. No? Livestock production account for 50% of emission from food consumption, most of these animal products. Most emissions in the rest of the food chain are linked to transport. From the data presented, uh, it's possible to draw three useful insights to design a more efficient and less uh, costly food system in terms of energy consumption. Firstly, promoting a more sustainable agroecosystem management that provides enough food without damaging the environment. The organic production is a good alternative because it reduces the use of fertilizer, fossil fuels, and animal feed as long as this organic farming is based on agroecological criterion, no merit substitution of input. That's to say, strengthening the farmer autonomy and promoting the closure of biochemical cycles. Spain is a leader in this method of production in Europe and its size continues to grow, but this is not enough. We also need uh, a significant reduction in energy use along the food chain. This can be possible by promoting shorter distribution channels, where a more direct connection from producer to consumer is possible and where less storage and transport requirements are needed. We have proposed recently uh, building agroecological, uh, sorry, <laughs> it's difficult to pronounce, agroecological based local agri food system, uh, we call ALAS, as the best way to achieve this, bringing together the, the many existing small scale agroecological space, uh, experience. In this slide, you can see some of the features of this local system. For example, the economies of scale and scope that they are able to perform, the 
horizontal integration and the reinforcement of autonomy from the big distribution are the empowerment of the social organization that they promote. They are built through cooperation between the different actors in the food chain, looking for synergies between them to produce input and to trade in common, facing the investment that the logistic force require. These uh, local food systems are Focus on domestic market and not in export market. So they are not uh, built to complete or compete, sorry, in global market with differentiated uh, quality product, but to meet the uh, food needs of the local population. The aim is to get, of course, food sovereignty. Finally, uh, we also need to move to war a diet that reduces the impact on household energy consumption and has less impact on the environment in Spain and the third countries. A more sustainable diet could be, for example, the Mediterranean diet that we practice in Spain in the 60s and the 70s. We have calculated the resulting reduction in greenhouse gas emission uh, in this X scenario, assuming that only local, not imported products are consumed in, uh, in terms of a Mediterranean diet. So practicing the Mediterranean diet and with local food system uh, can reduce in a 76% the non-renewable energy use and the 86% of the greenhouse gas emission of the total food system. So to reduce the energy profile of the food system is possible without disregarding the food needs of the Spanish population and the food quality, of course. We can uh, summarize all this lesson in, uh, come, uh, drawn from the history in four principles or pillars uh, that are useful for designing more sustainable food system. Uh, the first pillar is uh, practicing organic farming. That means uh, re-territorialization of food production, linking again territory and production. The second pillar is a, a practice a more vegetarian diet. This does mean re-vegetarianization of, so re of diet. The third pillar uh, is a practice a more local consumption. That means relocalization of markets. And finally, the fourth pillar is uh, uh, eat uh, more seasonal food, no? but that means re seasonalization of food consumption. Uh, I think these four criteria uh, are so useful to design a, a sustainable scenario for food system. No? And if you want to have more information, we have developed this uh, inside in, in this book. Uh, this four book, uh, some of them has been uh, already uh, um, shown by, by by Irina previously, and this is all I want to to say in this uh, talk. Thank you very much for 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 listening to me. Thank you, Professor. Um... That was a great uh, presentation for uh, learning a lot of important facts about what is happening. Um, I'm already jumping into thinking about what, what I would like to, to discuss um, further, um, starting from this um, data. Um, but of course, I'm, uh, I want first to invite the public to ask questions. Um, they can be in Portuguese or in Spanish or in English. You can write or you can 
um, ask for permission to to speak directly with Professor Molina. It's really it's really up to the to the public to decide how to ask the questions. Um, Okay, we have already a question uh, from Carlos Manuel. W would you like to write it or you want to um, talk directly to Professor Molina? Uh, because if you want to, to talk, we have to give you permission uh, to, to hear your uh, microphone. So you have to let us know how you prefer. For us, it's, it's the same, really. I can ask, I can... I can ask the question for you if you write it down, or you can, uh, or we can ask Isabel, our uh, host here, to to let you speak directly to. Okay. It's always nicer to speak <laughs> directly. Okay, yeah. I, 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 Thank I you think very it much. Also, let me just fix my camera. Okay. Hi, Carlos. You... Hi. Hola. Entonces, te voy a decir una cosa que lo creo que no somos casi todos portugueses o españoles. Entonces, me parece que es más sencillo hacer la cuestión en una lengua latina. No lo sé. <risa> Por mí, eh, lo, lo que prefieras. Sí, sí. You're not, you're not uh, Spanish or Portuguese uh, speaker, right? Oh, right, right. Ok, so for, because Irina is here, I'll ask in ¿Tú, English. ¿Tú puedes decirla en portugués? Yeah, Tú puedes decirla en portugués y yo te la contesto en español. It is Go ahead, because... I can understand Spanish and, and Portuguese. Yes, really? Yes. Ok. Uh, entonces, es la tercera vez que voy a hacer esta cuestión en una semana. Siempre con lo mismo cuestione, que no es un, ¿cómo voy a decir? No es un, una contestación, es una pregunta sincera. Mi pregunta es, si producir local... ¿Es posible mantener una población creciente, número uno? Y número dos, si ¿es posible uh, mantener un precio que es afordable para poblaciones con una baja renta, como es el caso, por ejemplo, de Portugal, que se dice que tiene dos millones de gente pobre y una población de diez? Entonces, mi, mi pregunta es siempre esta. Y es una pregunta sin cualquier preconcepto, sin cualquier idea hecha. Es para que me... Please do enlighten me. Yes. Thank you Mira, very much. Thank, gracias. Mira, yo te... Mmm, tiene varias contestaciones. Te voy a dar el caso español. Les digamos como es. Yo he trabajado el caso español. Nosotros hicimos un trabajo que no he mostrado aquí, en el cual... Hacíamos el cálculo de si los agroecosistemas en España podrían alimentar localmente, claro, a la población española sin ocasionar ningún problema de abastecimiento producido de forma ecológica, es decir, orgánica, eh, con, con, digamos, comercio de cercanía, o sea, con canales de distribución cortos, para alimentar a... 47 millones de individuos que hay ahora mismo en España. El resultado era que necesitábamos un 10% más de tierra de la que ahora mismo se dedica a la agricultura en España. Pero fíjate, lo interesante es que España tiene ahora mismo, por razones que tienen que ver con el, el, la forma de organización de la cadena alimentaria, obliga a tener abandonados 6 millones de hectáreas, que son muy similares a los 8 millones de hectáreas que nosotros importamos virtualmente de Brasil y de Argentina para alimentar una cabaña ganadera que no es de destinada a alimentar a los españoles, sino a alimentar con cerdo y con aves a los chinos. O sea que es una cosa que se va al exterior. Nosotros decidimos que si hacíamos un ajuste entre la, la, digamos, la, producción, la, eh, la producción agrícola, la producción pecuaria o ganadera y la producción forestal y lo mezclábamos todo como se hacía antiguamente mediante la integración agro-silvo-pastoril, 
era suficiente para alimentar los 47 millones de individuos. Claro, la pregunta es, ¿será suficiente para alimentar a 100 millones de individuos? Claro, esta pregunta la, está mal formulada. La pregunta sería correcta, ¿hasta cuándo podemos seguir alimentando a la población? Es decir, o en algún momento los 7.600 millones de individuos que pueblan eh, el planeta tienen que parar, ¿no? Tendrá que parar. Y esto está relacionado con la pobreza, con un montón de cuestiones que ahora aquí no podemos tratar. Pero quiero decir, con criterios agroecológicos, explotando la sinergia entre la tierra agrícola, las tierras más intensivas, más extensivas, las tierras forestales y pecuarias, con una buena integración entre agricultura y ganadería, se puede, eh, en el caso español, eh, proporcionar alimentos suficientes y de calidad para la población, incluso sobra. Ahora bien, yo en Portugal no lo sé. Esto hay que calcularlo. Yo lo que no puedo es decir, seguro que hay bastante, ¿no? No lo sé. No sé. Habría que hacer las cuentas, ¿no? Hay una... Nosotros pusimos en marcha una metodología que se llama Land Cost of Agrarian Sustainability, que es decir, una forma, una metodología para medir si, o sea, cuáles son las hectáreas que se les requieren y con qué uso para proporcionar un número determinado de alimentos. Porque hoy, para que se entienda bien esto, si tú inyectas gran cantidad de tierra virtual de otros terceros países puede incluso abandonar la tierra. Es decir, esto es lo que está ocurriendo ahora mismo con la llamada forest transition. Es un algo así que nosotros podemos mantener grandes cantidades de bosque precisamente para que se queme, como ocurre en Portugal y en España, para que se queme porque no tiene ningún uso, porque importamos grandes cantidades de biomasa barata fundamentalmente en el caso de Portugal y España, de América Latina. Entonces, digamos, vinculándolo al territorio de nuevo, es posible perfectamente hacer esto. Muchas gracias. Me parece que ya acabaste de describir una vejeza, la lógica de producción de una vejeza. Sí, sí, sí. Pastoril. Thank you very much. Yo, yo, yo vivo en una, una región de vejeza. Muchas gracias. Voy a buscar tu artículo y no tomo más tiempo. Gracias. Thank you. We can continue the, this debate because I see we have a, another question. Somebody wants to, to ask a specific question. Um, I'm not sure the name of this person, but we have a question that says, how does eating more vegetables or doing organic farming without cost benefit Uh, ratio could be sustainable by itself. It is not better for the environment and for the metabolic system to eat less meat, where meat is cheaper than eating vegetables if they are imported. The same applies to the organic farming, which in some cases the terrain needed proportionate much higher cost than industrial farming. Buying local or consuming seasonable food seems much more reasonable as an advice in general. <laughs> Looks more like a comment rather than a, yes, yes. a question. Yes, yes. I am so, uh, and so uh, agree uh, yeah, with yeah. this comment because the, the problem now with organic agriculture is that this is a, a, a pro production that they produce a food stuff for rich people now because the, the distribution channel are not organized and the, because the, the, the organic uh, production now in many cases follow the same line that the, the, the conventional production in terms of a large channel of distribution uh, are the, 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 the food miles syndrome again the, the, and, and So the organic agriculture follow in, in, in great measure the same path that uh, conventional. But we have yeah. to change. For this is due to problem of the institutional framework the, where the organic agriculture have to develop. This is another uh, different question we have to, to, to debate in another 
a seminar. <laughs> but uh, the, 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 the second question is that uh, uh, the problem now for, for why the people eat uh, meat is because it's cheaper than vegetable uh, first up. Is, uh, we have calculated, for example, the evolution of the end price of the meat uh, from cows, from uh, sheep, from uh, uh, chicken and, and, and pork. And we have compared these uh, prices with the four uh, products, uh, vegetable product, uh, tomato, potato, uh, I don't remember exactly the, the, the but if you take the, the evolution in, into account, the evolution, we can see that uh, uh, the, mm, the price of the, the meat has come down and the price of the vegetable has risen. That's the, uh, because you can buy now, for example, with the same price, one kilogram of meat and one kilogram of, of tomato with the same price. So it's easy to understand that the people choose meat. Of course. This is the problem as the institutional framework. Because why is the reason? The reason is the uh, huge amount of feed import from Latin America with a extremely, dramatically low prices. That's the problem. Thank you very much. We also have a, a question from Margarida Sobral Neto. Uh, I think maybe she wants to ask the question directly because she didn't ask. Uh, so go ahead, Margarida. Thank you. We cannot hear you, so you have to activate your microphone. Hello. Hello. We cannot hear you. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we can hear oh. you. Hi, Margarita. <laughs> oh. um, quero apenas uh, felicitá-lo pela, pela, pela sua comunicação, que foi efetivamente muito interessante e que nos uh, faz, faz pensar em grandes, em grandes problemas da atualidade e num certo retorno a, a determinadas formas de viver do uh, passado. Muito obrigada. Obrigada. Obrigado. Um, we also have another question from uh, Pedro Mendoza from the Center for Functional Ecology. Um, he says, I feel that the matter of price dynamics, if consumption turns local, was a bit overlooked in the case of Spain. Is it possible that you expand a bit? The matter of price dynamics. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure if he, he understood well this, this question. It probably uh, Pedro could uh, uh, detail more the, the question. Uh, perhaps Pedro wants to talk directly if he's still there and he, if you he can hear us, Pedro. Um, Isabel can uh, let you your microphone uh, on. <coughs> <clears throat> Hello. Hello. Yes. yes Hello. We can, we can hear Go you. ahead. Go ahead. I sorry. I was trying to to write it down because I'm kind of in a, a construction site right now, but I I'm finding it so interesting that I uh, I wanted to to join in no matter what. Um, I was uh, the price dynamics was actually referring to the earlier question by Carlos uh, at the beginning where he asked would it be possible in terms of production and what would happen in terms of access to food uh, and how inequality would play out in in, in, in the access to food if uh, the production and the consumption turns uh, local that that was the the gist of the question okay but uh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, I, 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 I couldn't uh, give you a, a general answer of this or of this uh, question. No? Uh, the problem is because uh, we have no uh, 
distribution channel established in the alternative food systems already uh, functioning in Spain and even in, in all countries of Europe. Because we have uh, many inefficiencies of this kind of experiences because we are not trying to scale enough them in order to make, uh, for example, um, economies of scale or scope. No? That's the problem. Uh, but the, the experiences that we already, uh, already uh, know, the prices are low, lower, lower than to the, the conventional market. For example, I belong to a cooperative of uh, organic uh, production, and I usually buy uh, all the, the, my food uh, in um, less price than the supermarket near to my house. This is uh, the, the question, but it depends on the, the, the place you are and the, the, the market you go. This is not, uh, we can pro provide you with a general uh, answer, but of course the logical say that uh, if you have less uh, stages of the chain, you have to save money, of course, no? because you have to invest a lot of money in uh, logistic and and uh, many other uh, operation that is in the whole food uh, chain. Thank you very much. We only have maybe seven minutes more, so I will take advantage of the fact that there is nobody asking a question right now, so I can actually uh, ask my own questions. Um, I'm also interested very much in the topic of uh, agroecology, specifically on the issue of political agroecology. Um, I work with peasant association uh, called Eco Ruralis in Romania, and um, okay. that uh, is part of Via Campesina and uh, is trying to promote uh, food sovereignty in Romania. Romania is still one of the few, uh, I mean, actually the only country that still has peasants, just to put it very briefly, still has lots of peasants. You are um, lucky. You are lucky. We are lucky, but uh, the, it's not considered an opportunity. It's considered a weakness of the economic and agricultural system. And so for me, the interest is uh, not so much in promoting, let's say, organic or ecological agriculture, but for me, the interest is to how to connect the transition to sustainability with the transition to human rights and social justice. Because um, obviously, we all want uh, even the institutions, let's say, of the mainstream uh, agriculture and of the industrial farming wants to have organic now. It's a good way to make more money, but we still don't address the problem of cheap labor, the problem of uh, proletarization. You know, the big old questions of Marx are still right there in most of the countries from the South, including Eastern Europe, where land grabbing is becoming a huge issue. So we have the problem of cheap labor and, uh, and of migrants and coupled with the problem of depesantization. So this, these are not new problems, but in Eastern Europe, let's say, are becoming more and more uh, huge issues. So my question to you, what do you think is the main obstacle to, poly to scaling up the so-called new paradigm of political agroecology and not just agroecology as a technical change? Yes. So you know, my, you know what I mean. I as you probably know, we have another approach to agroecology. It's a more holistic uh, approach to agroecology, especially from a social and economic point of view, not only uh, technical or, or agronomic question. Agroecology is, is based on autonomy and uh, equity. Without equity and autonomy, it's impossible to practice agroecology. This is the, the, the first question. But the, the, the uh, then the, the evolution you are drawing now um, um, for Romania is the same that uh, now are, are, are happening now in Spain. We are changing the model from a familiar, familiar um, 
uh, agriculture, or family farmers, to a big farmer with salary work, no? with, uh, with a poor quality of work condition and using especially immigrants. No? But this tendency that is the same that in, in, in Romania uh, is produced by or is uh, fostered by the institutional framework, neoliberal institutional framework posed by European Commission and uh, uh, the government of Romania and Spain. And, and for me, we have a, a name now a specific uh, effect produced by institutional framework that we have called the uh, rejection effect. That is, there are some rules that uh, reject all the uh, agroecological experiences, reducing to a, a minority and uh, prevent to, to be uh, a, a big experience. No? And the, the problem is now is, uh, of course, uh, institutional framework. And so the only way to change this is fighting again this kind of rule and try to change it. No? As Via Campesina has uh, already proved to, to change. No? And uh, through the, the social movement uh, fighting against the neoliberal uh, way to understand the functioning of market and the channel distribution and so on. We need policy, uh, politics. We need to, to to change. Of course, without changing the institutional framework, nothing is possible. Of course. Definitely, we are on the same line regarding the necessity not only to create more social movement in terms of ag agro food changes, but also to. Uh, support peasants in coming together. Yes, of course, because the transition has to be based on peasant, on the peasantry, and the the, the old peasantry and the new peasantry. Yeah, mm. that that's another issue that very important. But obviously, yes. that, that there is still a very few discussion about uh, peasantry, and and I'm using the word peasant precisely because even if there is so much focus, especially in Europe, on family farming and on farming, there is a big distinction that it's still needed to be between peasants and farmers. So that, that's very important political statement in that sense that needs to be, let's say, promoted uh, through movements. But we need to, to, to make an alliance between peasant, new peasant and farmers with the consumer in the cities and the agroecologists in the cities to uh, build a majority of change that uh, be uh, be possible to change the food system with the, because the peasant and new peasant are a min minority in terms of uh, election and the um, the win a, 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 a election for example and and, and change the the policies, the public policies. This is the problem. We have to need a, a build a, a more broad alliance to to try to change and yeah. go ahead in the the, the, the the agroecological transition. This is my point of view, of course. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I share with you. I mean, it's uh, so much to discuss about what strategies are needed in terms of alliance yes. making and intersectionality and more more problems than then we can uh, think of depending on the context and the local uh, local uh, of specificities. Of course. For example, in Romania, actually, the rural population is very much an important uh, political uh, maneuvering kind of population. So yes, uh, it's, it's, you have yeah. to 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 uh, design in each country yeah. <laughs> with different. Yeah. Uh, agents, no, or social agents or social movement, of course. And not to mention the problem of populism that is happening now. Yes, this is my point of view, the, the food populism. This is my yeah, proposal. Exactly. But, mm. but uh, populism is uh, very well, easily co-opted by the right wing, if, uh, for example, in Eastern Europe, when the yeah, discourse is of You have to, uh, to fight against this. You have exactly. to, with the same 
with the same weapons you have to fight against because we leave a, a lot of space for the right populism now this is against the 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 the, 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 the own peasant yeah, we have our colleague uh, Natalie Mamonova who writes a lot about the problem in Eastern Europe, but definitely the, the key word here is uh, lucha, is lutar, is how to struggle and how to create movements in that respect. But I don't want to go further because as far as I know, we are supposed to finish and yes. I don't want to monopolize the discussion. I'm glad that I managed to have a little bit of conversation specifically on the political question of agroecology. And um, unless there are any other question, which I don't see anybody, we still have a lot of participants who had the patience to listen and to, to be present here with us. And it's really, it's really nice to see people are interested in, uh, in this topic. And Thank you very much for participating and thank you, Professor Molina, for being here today with us. Hopefully soon we will meet uh, in a different event. And um, yes, unless there is anything else you want to, to say, we thank you for your... No, only thank you. Thank you, the organizer and you for this uh, nice uh, session. Thank you and uh, good luck Thank everybody in, in the work that we'll, we are all doing in some way or another towards what we want to be a just food transition. Okay. All the best. All the best. All the best. Ciao, ciao. everybody. Ciao.